Hello everyone. I'm sorry I couldn't be here today to do this. I had to take a little bit of time off to help my sister-in-law with something. Um, but I didn't want to take it away any time because our schedule is already really cramped full of stuff. Looking forward to the rest of the semester. So we're going to go ahead and go through it like this. And then when you'll see me again next week, if you have any questions as you're going through, um, we can talk about those as well. Um, so we've got one project under our belt. We've got one organ system um, under our belts and we're moving right along. Now we're starting to go more internally. Um, we've got the foundation that we had laid down for us with the basics as well. So we can keep talking about this. This unit is, I'm gonna be using a lot of this terminology that we studied at the very beginning of the school year. So that's gonna be coming back. Um, this particular uh, project, we're going to be looking at two organ systems put together, and they do a lot, they underpin one of the main definitions of what it means to be an animal. Um, humans are animals, and one of the characteristics of animals is they're able to move at some point during their life cycle. And our skeletal system and our muscular system work together to be able to do that. One of the functions of the skeletal system is movement. Now, it's not the only one, and we'll talk about that, um, but your skeleton cannot move without your muscles. Those are the engines that are actually driving that movement, uh, but at the same time, if your muscles don't attach to your bones, you're not going to move either. They just flex and they don't do anything. It's not a productive, productive use of energy and a productive force. And we'll talk about that um, in greater detail also. But basically, um, what we want to do is we're going through with this particular project, looking at the skeletal system and the muscular system, um, is we want to see what is the role of the skeletal system so we'll talk about all the various functions that the skeletal system does, as well as the structures that allow us to do that. Remember, anatomy and physiology, we're looking at the structure and we're looking at the function. So we're going to need to know how the bones work, but we also need to know about specific bones as well. Uh, we're also going to do the same thing with the muscular system. So how do your muscles work? What is muscle tissue? How do they function? Um, the structures inside of the cells, but we also need to know the specific muscles that work in different areas to move different parts of your body and stuff like that. Um, and then finally, the biggest thing that we're going to be looking at for this project is how do these two systems work together to provide proper functioning? So both of them are important by themselves, but it's really where you start putting the two together that... Um, we really start to see a lot of the really cool things. And this product, this the product that you're going to be making, um, uh, is really going to illustrate, uh, especially that last one. And so what you're going to create, you and your team are going to create a working model of one of the six types of synovial joints. And if that doesn't make, if that doesn't mean anything to you right now, that's okay. When I see y'all next week, we're going to talk about what that is um, and what some of the other types of joints are. You've got all sorts of joints in your body, junctures between uh, bones. Uh, some of them move, some of them don't, but they're all really important. So you're going to model one of the six types of joints. Now I'm going to give each group a type of joint, okay? So you need to be familiar with how all of them work, but I'm going to give you one that you're going to specialize on. For the model, you're gonna, so this is a working model, and I'll pull out some examples before I leave, and then I'll showcase some on uh, next week when I see you all again, um, some of the examples of some of these items that we're, I'm asking you to do. So in your model, you're going to be able to have to identify the bones that make that joint. You'll also have to tell us 
um, which part of the skeleton that is, the appendicular skeleton or the axial skeleton. You'll also have to tell us the muscles that are responsible for moving that joint. Um, and for some, for most of us, we'll really dial in because there's a boatload of muscles. I'm asking you to know a lot of them, but it's not nearly all of them, thankfully. Um, and then also the ligaments responsible for holding the bones together, uh, which we'll talk about when we're doing the deeper discussions into the skeletal system and stuff like that. Um, there are going to be some tendons that we need to know about that um, are working with the muscles, allowing the muscles to attach to the bones, and uh, we'll address those as necessary when we come across them. As far as the study guide is concerned, there's not a whole ton of actual tendons that you need to know, like the Achilles tendon is pretty, is, is one of them. Um, but we'll address those as, as, as we go through the project time and stuff like that. Um, as far as the presentation is concerned, you're going to be presenting to a panel of experts. So these are people in the medical profession, um, doctors, nurses, physical therapists, medical students, nursing students, stuff like that. Um, people who know a decent amount about this stuff and know the specific structures and things like that. They're going to evaluate you on the accuracy of your model um, as well as correctly identifying the above structures. Now, you're also going to be presenting these to me. I want to go ahead and throw that out there. Um, but it's not just me. You're going to be presenting this to professionals, experts in their fields, people who know what it is that we're talking about. So that's going to, that, that's, that raises the bar a little bit more than if you're just presenting it to me. So kind of keep that in mind. That's kind of where I want your head to be once we get to the end. We're not there yet. So don't freak out on me. Or if you do, take a couple of deep breaths because it's okay. We will get you to that point by the time we're done. Um, individually, standard rules apply. We're going to have a test over the skeletal and the muscular system at the end of the present, at the end of the project timeline. You've got, um, benchmark reflections, uh, collaboration peer assessments that you'll have to do for each benchmark, as well as the final reflection at the very end, along with the, uh, presentation of the model. Um, as far as benchmarks. Now, I would like to say, as you're going through, um, if you have any questions, write them down, and you definitely need to make sure that you put those in your nose and your need to know, so I can look at those, and I'm gonna address those questions right there. And if I've got a lot of questions, that, like the same questions that pop up for every single, um, like if every single group sends me the same basic questions, I'll address those as a whole group when I see y'all again. Um, so definitely make sure as you're going through this right now and you're reading through the entry document, you want to make sure that you're recording those questions so you can put them in your nose and your need to knows uh, so I can take a look at those. Um, benchmarks are going to come kind of quickly, at least at the beginning. So uh, next week, our first one is the um, explanation of the joint, basically. Um, so are you getting a ball and socket, uh, for example? Are you getting a hinge? You'll tell me um, the type, the, the general name for the joint. What type of movement does it allow for? So some of them um, only allow one plane of movement. Some of them allow for multiple planes. Um, some of them allow full rotation. Some of them have a simulated rotation, but it's not technically rotation. Um, and then an example within the body. And that's going to be really important because a lot of your uh, research moving forward after this is going to be based on the specific part of the body that you're going to be researching. Um, it's kind of hard to identify a lot of these structures um, just by going with a general um, Part. So you'll want to lock in um, early on what example it is you're going to be modeling um, because that's going to decide your model. Um, 
you know, you've got two big ball and socket joints in your body, but the structures that you need to know for each one are very different. So if you end up with ball and socket, you need to pick one and dedicate yourself to researching that one. Okay. Um, so that's going to be due next week. Then, uh, a couple days later, after we've had a chance to talk about, um, some of the, uh, structures that we're going to be looking at when we talk about the bones, you're going to specifically identify the bones that are involved in the particular joint that you're going to be researching. Now, one of the things that I'll establish right now is you're going to be responsible for the bones primarily that are on the study guide that is posted in Echo. Um, There's a lot of these that have bones that are not required for us to memorize, I guess I should say, by St. Philip's. So um, for a lot of that stuff, you won't have to. Uh, For the bones, for some of that stuff, it's really important. Um, Like, for example, if you do anything that's involving the wrist joint, uh, there's a whole lot of individual bones that you won't need to know. Um, You're only responsible for knowing the groups. The then about a week after that is the um, third benchmark where you're going to be talking about the muscles as well as preliminary sketches and identifying parts that you're going to be using to build your model. Um, this one is a bigger one as far as only having to put in those structures that are required by the uh, study guide. There are way more muscles in the human body than we are going to be required to memorize. So that's going to help us really narrow down what structures, as far as the muscles are concerned, that you're going to need to memorize. So kind of keep that in mind. However, that's a little bit of a ways out. So um, we'll coach ourselves through that, um, and I'll talk about that when we get closer to those benchmarks. Uh, Then there's going to be a little bit of a break in there because all the planning is done. We've done all the workshops as far as going over all the material. Um, so you're going to have about two weeks or so where you're going to be working on the model and stuff like that. And then we'll be doing presentations. Okay. So final presentations are going to be, um, the first weekish or so in November, your models are actually going to be due in class by, uh, the 10th. If you're eight, eight, well, but y'all aren't eight, eight, so who cares? The 11th. Um, that's also coincidentally your test day. So the test day will run similarly to how we did with the skin test. You'll take the test, whatever time you have left over is yours to work on your project. If you're done with your project, then work forward. Cause we'll have a set of notes that are already due for the final project of the semester. Um, at that point, projects are due in class by the end of the day on, um, the 11th, which is a Thursday. And then we will start presentations uh, for us for B-Day will be on the um, 15th, which is kind of hard to see because it's really tiny, Uh, but it's a Monday so we're making the pro- we're making the projects do a little bit early because there is a break in there um, as far as getting things done. So you want to make sure that when you're you're looking forward, your budgeting time and stuff like that, um, you're gonna have to have them do before that weekend. So when you come in fresh, do the presentations, and then the sixteenth is when we start our next project. Um. I think that is it. Your groups are already built in Echo. So right now, um, the next things that I need to see from y'all is your... um, uh, Make sure if you haven't moved yet, you need to uh, be in your groups. You need to be working on your team contract and your nose and 
need to knows before you walk out of the door at the end of the class period. If you get done with those, then your next steps need to be to work on your bones notes, okay? Uh, I changed the due date from what was in the agenda to the end of the day today to talk about those. So once you are done with your team contract and your knows and need to knows, if you have the time, if you need the time, you have the time to finish your bones notes. If you did those, then you can work on your skeleton notes. Uh, if you've done those, you've got muscle um, You've got muscle tissue notes that you can work on and muscle anatomy notes. So lots of things that you have to work on. I expect you to be working on these things. Because I'm giving you this time, my expectation is you shouldn't have any problem getting this stuff turned in. Um, if you have any questions specifically about the project, put them in the nose and the need to know so I can address them then. If you have other questions about stuff... If you have other questions about stuff, then you can send me an email and I will try to get back to you as quickly as I can. I'm going to be kind of away from my computer for a little bit um, off and on, but I will try to get back to you as soon as we can. Um, grades are due. If you owe me anything, this is your last chance. If I've talked to you about stuff or if it's still within the window from stuff that was from last week, uh, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. Um, these grades are going to go on the next nine weeks, but you still need to get them turned in, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, I, if y'all need me for anything, let me know. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing y'all again soon.